What's up, fellas? Hope everyone is doing well today. We are going over our top 15 dynasty quarterback tier rankings one week removed from the NFL draft, as we now have a much clearer picture of where teams are heading going into the 2024 season. Who's on the up and up now because of additions and free agency and in the draft and who's on the decline maybe as a result of that. We will go over that and so much more in this video. And before I begin, make sure you are subscribed. We are now ramping up to two podcast episodes a week. And during the summer, we will have a host of guests with their wealth of knowledge to give you scoops and tips and insights to give you an edge over your league mates this year. So make sure you are subscribed. So let's get right on into it. We're going to start with the S tier. This is going to probably take the, the, the shortest amount of time to, to discuss. It's Josh Allen. And I call this a one on one tier because the guy has been the quarterback one in three of the last four years. And the one year that he wasn't the quarterback one, he was the quarterback two. So <laughs> he is a, he is a top three quarterback in dynasty. And it really just in fantasy football in general. And yes, he did lose Stefan Diggs this off season, but if we were to go back to last season, right? When Stefan Diggs, his production took his dip in week 11 and he was the wide receiver 44. Then for the rest of the season, Josh Allen was still the quarterback one. In fantasy points per game, I should clarify, he was a quarterback too, but it was because they had a bye week. So look, Josh Allen was just fine. So is it going to hurt not having a Stephon Diggs in that Buffalo Bills offense? Yes, it probably will. But again, Josh Allen has just continued to produce year in and year out. There's no reason to doubt him. He is the 101 of dynasty quarterbacks. And now we're going to move on to the A tier that consists of Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Patrick Mahomes. We have these guys in the A tier, and I will call this tier the elite producers in great offenses. Guys that you could have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback too, and that's fine. We would not really push back on it because, again, these are elite producers on great offenses. So we're going to start with Jalen Hurts. He's my quarterback too. Lucas is quarterback too, and Cam's quarterback four. There's no more Brian Johnson calling the plays in in philly uh it is now kellen moore and that is a massive upgrade if you ask me and the tush push is still a thing now most of jalen hurts's rushing production didn't exactly come from the tush push alone yes it did help you know he's probably getting four or five touchdowns maybe even six or seven depending on the year from the tush push so if he were to lose the tush push it probably would have affected things a little bit but it wouldn't have been a dramatic or drastic change in his outlook but what does kind of add some murkiness to his outlook is the fact that they went out and signed Saquon Barkley you know this Eagles offense now has a running back of a you know of the quality of Saquon Barkley they're not relying on a DeAndre Swift on a Boston Scott on a Kenny Gainwell on a Miles Sanders they have a guy in Saquon Barkley who can do it all so does his presence affect those kind of rushing opportunities and scoring opportunities for Jalen Hurts? I think it does a little bit. But with Kellen Moore in town now, I think with the potential you know decrease that you could see in rushing production, we could see it made up in passing production because, again, he's throwing to A.J. Brown, who is now the highest paid wide receiver in the league. He's throwing to Devontae Smith, who is a top 10 highest paid wide receiver in the league. He's throwing to Dallas Goddard. He does have Saquon Barkley as a weapon as well if he were to maybe check the ball down a little bit more instead of rushing it. Just, just general observation. But again, Jalen Hurts, quarterback two, who has just continued to con uh, deliver results because of his rushing upside. Next guy is Lamar Jackson. He's my quarterback three. He is Cam's quarterback three. He is Lucas's quarterback four. And Lamar was the MVP of last season. Career best or highs, I, I career best or highs, excuse me, in dropbacks, passing attempts, completions, and subsequently completion percentage and passing yards. And he still got it done on the ground. The most rushing attempts, most rushing yards and touchdowns since 2020 and the most scrambles as well. Baltimore went out and signed Derrick Henry. So does his presence also affect Lamar Jackson's rushing upside? A little bit. It, it has to, right? Adding a guy like Derrick Henry has to affect something for Lamar Jackson's rushing production. And the other part of this too is that this Baltimore Ravens offensive line is very different. You lose Kevin Zeitler, you lose John Simpson, so you're two starting guards, and you lose Morgan Moses. This offensive line is going to be very different, so is that going to affect things for Lamar Jackson? Probably. We are probably going to see some more volatility in his uh, fantasy results week to week. But the guy just continues to deliver because, again, 
he he is a mobile quarterback who is getting better in trusting his weapons i'll say mark andrews and zay flowers and now he'll kind of mix it out or mix it up then between rashad bateman and nelson aguilar tells tez walker who they took in the fourth round of this year lamar jackson is a playmaker and playmakers at the quarterback position will always give you fantasy production the next guy then is patrick mahomes my quarterback four cam's quarterback two and lucas's quarterback five the the back-to-back super bowl champ but he was the quarterback 12 in fancy points per game. So this, you may see that and say, well, that's a little high for Patrick Mahomes. The thing that plagued him last year, though, was the fact that he had the most drop passes of any quarterback, and it wasn't his fault because he was first in true completion percentage. So lots of lots of missed opportunities that were not on him uh, to put up better fantasy weeks. So there is major bounce back opportunity for Mahomes going into this year because they added Xavier Worthy, they added Hollywood Brown to give him better pass catchers. And you again, you still have Travis Kelsey. So Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, elite producers in great offenses. They belong in this A tier. And we will now move on to our B tier quarterbacks. And I call this B tier like the upward trajectory tier. Guys that have, again, uh, upward, I, I would say they have an upward trajectory going into the season and into the future. We're going to start with CJ Stroud. He's my quarterback five. He's Cam's quarterback five. He's Lucas's quarterback three. And I, I, when I first saw that, I thought it was a little high. And the more I kind of sat on it, thought about it, it makes, it makes sense. It makes sense. Stroud exceeded expectations and then some last year to be the offensive rookie of the year. And Houston aired it out last year. Uh, Stroud finished as I uh, finished in the top 10, excuse me, in air yards and yards per attempt. So that definitely helps uh, elevate his fancy production. And now they add Stefan Diggs. And now he's throwing to Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell when he comes back healthy, and Dalton Schultz. And then, oh, yeah, they went out and signed, uh, they traded for Joe Mixon and resigned him as well. So now he's got some running game help as well. This pattern of young quarterbacks getting top receivers only benefits quarterbacks. It only helps them out. You look at Jalen Hurts when Philly traded for A.J. Brown. Before A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts was a quarterback nine. With A.J. Brown, he was a quarterback three. Josh Allen with Stephon Diggs. Josh Allen before Diggs was a quarterback six, and with Diggs was the quarterback one in that following season. And you could even see it on a lower scale, too, with Tua in Miami. Before Tyreek Hill, Tua was a quarterback 26. And then after Tyreek, he was the quarterback 15. So it wasn't the, the, the drastic and major jump into that like top 12, top 10, but going from 26 to 15 is, I mean, drastic in the sense that you could see some upside and have some trust in Tua if you needed him to be. So CJ Stroud last year was a quarterback 11. Yeah, Diggs. How high can he go? How high can he finish this year? That's why he has got some serious upward trajectory, in our opinion. Next guy is Anthony Richardson. He's my quarterback six. Cam's quarterback six. Lucas is quarterback six. Quarterback six across the board because, like, the guy is just an absolute weapon for this Colts offense. In his two fully healthy games last year, he was the quarterback. He finished as the quarterback four and the quarterback two. Top five finishes. Top five finishes. So, uh, he is coming back from an injury, though, and he is now going to have Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. So do does the rushing opportunities take a hit now because you do have a running back like Jonathan Taylor where, it, you know, you, you last year it was Zach Moss and Deion Jackson and some of those guys. Jonathan Taylor is going to get his in this offense because he's he's just that good of a talent. So while you may see some reduction or some, you know, regression in his rushing production Richardson is still going to give you six seven eight carries a game though because that's part of his skill set it's not like he's constantly scrambling right only seven of Anthony Richardson's 25 rushing attempts last year were scrambles they were giving him design carries so you look at the situation yes Jonathan Taylor is there but he, again JT will get his Richardson will get his as well you've got Michael Pittman back now after re-signing uh, or signing a three-year extension with the team. They drafted A.D. Mitchell in the second round. Josh Downs going into year two, who had some flashes last year as well. 
He's got the receiving core. He's got the he's got the playmakers. He's got the protection, and he's got the play caller and Shane Steichen to continue his. I, I he'll I will just say to make that upward trajectory a reality. He's got he's got limitless upside. Kyler Murray is our next guy. He is our consensus quarterback seven. He's my quarterback eight. Cam and Lucas is quarterback seven. And Kyler came back from his injury in week ten last year and. Over that stretch, he was a quarterback 10, and he gave us three top 10 finishes and four top 12 finishes. The biggest concern that people had when he was coming back from his injury was what was the rushing production going to be? Because that was the intrigue for Kyler before he got hurt. So what was it going to be coming off of this injury? He had 44 rushing attempts, 16 scrambles, and 28 rushing attempts. So either way, you'll be getting rushing production from Kyler. And what makes him even more of an intriguing option now is that he's going into year two of this Drew Petzing offense, and they just added Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, the top wide receiver from this draft. So he's going to have a guy that he can go to and rely on and trust in the passing game while still giving you some rushing production. So he's going to be a very popular mid-round, and I think a lot of people are going to kind of push his ADP higher up the board as we go throughout the summer because, again, the guy's a playmaker. And everything looks to be on the up and up for Kyler and this Arizona offense. And the last guy in this B tier is Joe Burrow. He's my quarterback seven and Cameron Lucas is quarterback eight. So we just have Joe Burrow and Kyler Murray kind of flipped between the three of us. Burrow only played in 10 games last year. And it wasn't the greatest of 10 games because he was, he was battling a, a calf injury for pretty much the entire time that he played, you know, the first Four weeks of the season, he was the quarterback 31 with three games with less than 10 fantasy points. But then after that, he was the quarterback six before re-injuring or getting picking up another injury uh, in his wrist. We'll have to see how the T. Higgins situation plays out in Cincinnati. But all we know is as things stand right now, he's in a very good situation. Jamar Chase. T. Higgins, they added Jermaine Burton in the third round, who I was a big fan of uh, watching his film. Uh, receiving options at tight end, they picked up Eric All. So if he can get healthy, that's kind of a sneaky option there. They had uh, they picked up Tanner McLaughlin. I think that's his name from Arizona as well. And they signed Mike Gusecki. So they've got pass catchers at tight end. We know the situation is great for Joe Burrow. And when he's healthy, he's been a top seven quarterback in fantasy football he was a quarterback seven in 2021 and he was the quarterback four in 2022 so if he's healthy with his situation again burrow could be pushing i think a tier going into next year because again we've seen him produce at that level before let's move on to our c tier quarterbacks and i'll call this quarterback or i'll call this tier the rookie sophomore tier which is kind of funny because you're going to look at that and go oh well caleb williams jordan love sure adjusted herbert i'll I'll get to herbert in a second but caleb williams is our it's our consensus quarterback nine he's my quarterback 10 cam lucas is quarterback nine number one overall pick by the by the bears in in this year's draft and he's got unbelievable weapons like his situation is also very, very good for a rookie quarterback. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, uh, Roma Dunze, who they took in the top 10 as well, and even Cole Komet. Look, like Cole Komet is a pretty underrated pass catcher in my opinion. So, look, the sky is the limit for this kid. He is going to be, t- you know, at the very top of draft boards in your super flex dynasty rookie drafts. Uh, he's probably going to be one of the top options as well when it comes to dynasty startup drafts and stuff like that because, again, the dude has – a super super high ceiling in this situation that he's in only reason why he's in this seat here though he just hasn't played a snap of football yet so we're talking upside we're talking wow look at look at how great it is on paper we just need to see it on the field now from uh from this point forward jordan love is our quarterback 10 he's my quarterback nine cam lucas is quarterback 10 so kale williams jordan love are also flip-flopped uh just like kyler murray and joe burrow were uh, Jordan Love's 2023 was a was a tale of two halves. First 10 weeks of the season, he was a quarterback 13, but he was a quarterback 18 from weeks 5 to 10, and the team's record was 3 and 6. Somewhere between week 10 and week 11, there was a switch that was flipped because from week 11 then to uh, until the end of the season, he was a quarterback 2 with 5 games with 20 or more fantasy points, and the team record was 6 and 2. He had the most passing yards. He was second in passing touchdowns and only one interception over that stretch as well. 
Then in free agency, the time the uh, the Packers went out and signed Josh Jacobs, which will only help take attention off of Jordan Love because you can't just ignore the fact that Josh Jacobs has been one of the most productive running backs over the last couple of years in the league. In his top four and five, four to five wide receivers are either going into year two or three. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, uh, uh, Dontavion Wicks, Bo Melton, if you want to <laughs> include him, and then like even Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave at uh, at, at tight end as well. So every, so things should only continue to get better at just with more experience for this Packers offense. And I think he liked Jordan Love a lot just because of how things were going at the end of last season. And like I said, just things are going to only get better with more experience for this really, really young but talented Green Bay offense. Justin Herbert now, who is the odd man out probably in this seat here because he's not a rookie, he's not a sophomore. But I, I kind of look at him as a rookie because going from his offensive coordinators and, and offensive schemes that he uh, that he played in under, who was it, Joe Lombardi and, and Kellen Moore, he's now going into a Greg Roman offense. That is like complete opposite end of the spectrum in terms of just like a high octane passing offense to pay, uh, slow pace, run the football kind of offensive scheme. So in that sense, like it, that, that's why I see him more as a rookie. I should, I'll call it first year. <laughs> that, that makes a lot more sense than calling him a, just a straight up, a straight up rookie. But this Jim Harbaugh team, Greg Roman offense will want to run the ball. Uh, that does not mean though, that they are going to run it 40 times a game. Like Herbert will still have to throw the ball. Uh, but his just his supporting cast is just very different now. It's it's very different. No more Keenan Allen, no more Mike Williams. You're throwing to Joshua Palmer, DJ Chark, who they just signed to a one year deal yesterday. Um, Lat McConkey, Quentin Johnston, Will Disley. Uh, I'm forgetting who the other tight end is that they signed, but this team is just very different from what we have seen in the past. So Look, Herbert has the talent that he can elevate everyone else around him, and he could still put up fantasy numbers. That's why he's still a, a he's our consensus quarterback eleven. He's my quarterback eleven. Cam's quarterback eleven. Lucas is quarterback twelve. Because the thing is, they're only going to add weapons down the road, so that gives them some more upside. Uh, but this year is going to sting a little bit. There's just going to be a lot of growing pains, and it's going to be reflected uh, in Justin Herbert's fantasy production. In the last guy in the seats here is the number two pick from this year's draft, Jaden Daniels. Um, again, the rushing production, draft capital situation, you know, only only tells me that things will get better in fantasy uh, in, in fantasy terms down the road. But this year, it's going to be kind of interesting. He's going to have to find his footing a little bit. It does help that you've got a guy like Terry McLaurin. You've got talent. You've got a talented wide receiver in Jahan Dotson as well. His again, his situation will go. Uh, will 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 continue to get better with his rushing production. He's got some upside. Uh, only again, only reason he's in the C tier is because he just has not played a single snap of football. And our last tier here before we wrap up the video is our uh, what I will call our accepted our acceptably aged point guard tier, and that's kind of a long worded tier uh, nickname, but. Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott. I would all say are at ages, you know, Brock Purdy and Trevor Lawrence are still on the younger side. Dak Prescott himself is 30. 30 is like the max where you would trust them to give you three years-ish of production before you would maybe look to move on or try to draft a younger quarterback to eventually replace them on your dynasty teams. But uh, before we get to Dak, let's go over uh, Brock Purdy. He's my quarterback 13, Lucas is quarterback 13, and Cam's quarterback 12. Purdy was the quarterback six last year. He was a top seven, top six quarterback. Uh, so the argument that he should be higher is kind of there. I kind of get it. But when it comes to dynasty, we are looking long term as well, not just immediate short term. And this 49ers offense, 
is coming to a crossroads in terms of who's maybe leaving and going and then who may be staying, right? Brandon Ayuk is going to be looking for an extension. He has been this offseason. Uh, Debo Samuel is getting up there in age as well with a ton of money invested in him. George Kittle is getting older. Christian McCaffrey is getting older. Offensive line is going to be solid, but Trent Williams, who is kind of the leader on that offensive line, is getting up there in age as well. So if they were to lose him in the next two years or so, that's going to be a massive loss for this offense. But as things stand right now, like you, you have to respect the fact that Brock Purdy is in arguably the best situation of any quarterback in football right now, right? With the playmakers, the play caller, the protection, he's, he's got it. He's got, he's got it better than everybody else. Only reason why he's in this D tier or I should say like this fifth tier of quarterbacks. It's just because he doesn't have the same rushing upside as Caleb Williams, as a Jaden Daniels, as Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, or even, you know, the top three quarterbacks on this list. He, it's just, it is not close. He just does not offer enough there. Um, but again, this 49ers offense is just too good to keep him outside of your top 15 because Playing point guard has only meant good things. It's only delivered results for us in, in fantasy football. Trevor Lawrence is next. He's my quarterback 14. Lucas is quarterback 13 and Cam's quarterback 13. And 2023 uh, was uh, not the year people expected. And in, I think in a lot of ways, it was a step back from what we had seen from 2021 to 2022, uh, going from Urban Meyer to Doug Peterson in a lot of people, including myself, thought that he could really start pushing that like top eight, top seven quarterback range. Uh, and I don't think that's the case after what happened last year. Um, fact is, though, it doesn't really help that you only have about two and a half seconds to throw the ball. And maybe that is just by design in the offense to get the ball out of the hand really quick. Um but when you're then called upon a ton to throw the ball down the field, Trevor Lawrence was top five in deep ball attempts last year, which is throws of 20 yards or more. So it doesn't, something is, something wasn't adding up in this Jacksonville offense last year. And it, it, you saw it in Trevor Lawrence's fantasy performances. Now, the Jaguars this offseason, they did draft Brian Thomas Jr. They did sign Gabe Davis to uh, fill the, the void that Calvin Ridley left when he signed with Tennessee. And they also signed a center, Mitch Morris, who uh, was released from Buffalo uh, to give them some stability on the offensive line because really your offensive line starts in the middle and it goes out. And if, you're, if your center isn't right, your offensive line isn't really going to be great as well. And I say that from experience as a Vikings fan, because I've seen it for many, many years. Um, so it wasn't a flashy off season of additions for Jacksonville, but they were good enough additions to give, to keep them in this, in this range of, <clears throat> excuse me, of top 15 dynasty quarterbacks. Because again, like Trevor Lawrence still has a ton of unrealized potential and unrealized talent. Do things get sorted out this year? I feel like we could see a rebound. We could see a little bit better of a season than we saw last year. Um, but I will just be brutally honest. This year is a make or break year. If he can, if he can rebound well enough, he's going to be pushing top 10. But if it's something similar to what we saw last year, he's going to be stuck in this 11 to 15 range. I, I would maybe even make the argument of just 13 to 15 just because that's where he would just be. He would almost be stuck there, if that makes sense. So Trevor Lawrence, still, again, tons of unrealized talent, and it's a risk. You, you know, in Dynasty Startup Drafts, you're going to be targeting Trevor Lawrence. It's a risk, um, but you know that the upside is there as well. And the last guy that we will discuss today is Dak Prescott. He's our quarterback 15 across the board. And Dak had an incredible season last year. He was third in passing yards. He was first in touchdowns. And the turnovers came back down, which was huge for him. The Cowboys offense did not operate uh, the way a lot of people, like myself, <laughs> expected. Uh, because they, they relied on Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb a ton. 
a ton. And, it, and and Dak took advantage of it. I mean, he finished as a top three quarterback, I believe top three, maybe it was top four quarterback on the year last year. As long as Dak Prescott has CD lamb, Dak Prescott is going to forever be just that later round option that will give you a solid 18, 19 a week. Won't happen every week, but again, 18 or 19 is a lot better than some of these guys that could give you 12, 12, 13 points a week. We'll see what the situation is for Dak though. He is going to the last year of his contract. That does make things a little murky in terms of his outlook. But in some ways, it's similar to Trevor Lawrence. It's a make or break year for Dak Prescott, right? Um, hopefully, he continues to produce like he did last year. Because if he did, you're kind of getting a steal in value then in your in your startup drafts. Even though he is 30, you're potentially getting a guy that can produce produce as a top five quarterback that'll probably be going later in drafts. Because again, like it's not the same rushing upside. He is 30 years old, but the guy just continues to deliver results. So. Again, not the flashiest player, uh, not the you know young stud that everyone wants to target in your dynasty startup drafts, but a really, really, really solid and really good option for quarterback in dynasty football. So that'll do it for our top 15 dynasty quarterback tier rankings. Just real quick, Josh Allen in the S tier, Jalen Hurts, Lamar, and Mahomes in the A tier, which we will call the elite playmakers and great offenses. In the B tier, which I called the upward trajectory tier. It's CJ Stroud. It's Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, and Joe Burrow. In the C tier, it's our rookie and sophomore tier. It's Caleb Williams. It's Jordan Love. It's Justin Herbert in the first year of a Greg Roman scheme, which is completely different to what we have seen in the past with Joe Lombardi and Kellen Moore. So not a rookie, more so first year, if that makes sense. And Jaden Daniels as well. And then in the D tier, it's our acceptably aged point guard tier with Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence, and Dak Prescott. Thank you so much for tuning into the video today. Again, make sure you are subscribed as we are ramping up now for draft time in our fantasy leagues, whether that's in best ball, that's in dynasty, regular redraft, all of that stuff you can find here with uh, two podcast episodes a week, two vid uh, YouTube videos a week. You will get short form content every single day as well. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials so you don't miss anything that we are putting out to help you get the edge on your teammates and hopefully make a push for championships this year. So again, we will be back next week. I believe Cameron will be on later today to do a live best ball draft. Tune into that. Uh, come hang out with Cameron later today. So again, make sure you subscribe. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. But until that, until the next time that we see you guys on the podcast or a video, uh, stay safe, stay healthy in the words of Lucas and deuces.